Hello and welcome to the fifth and final lecture for Unit 1. Today's lecture we are looking at two sections combined, sections 3 and 4 of chapter 2. We are looking at how the Spanish treat the Native Americans inside their empire in the Americas, how they govern their empire in the Americas, and then we're going to be looking at the beginning stages of slavery in the Americas. The Spanish Empire grew rapidly and Spain took several steps to establish an effective colonial government. Um, a colony is a group of people that leave one country, go to another, but they are still connected to the country that they left. They still pay taxes, they still follow the rules that the other country has, and the, other, and the, the country that they left supports them um, send soldiers and supplies and things like that. But the main goal of a colony is to make some money. And if a colony isn't run effectively, then you're not going to make much money. So first, Spain divides its American empire into two provinces called New Spain and Peru. On this map you will see in the red up here you will have New Spain and in the yellow over here you will have Peru. Each was called a vice royalty. The top official in a vice royalty is a viceroy and they ha they rule in the king's name. The king still makes all the rules for these colonies. They still establish all of the taxes and whatever the laws should be for the colony, but the viceroy makes sure that those things get um, implemented and get carried out. The Spanish also built new roads to help the colonies be more efficient. Um, the, col the roads helped Spain control its colonies, allowing soldiers to move quickly from place to place. So if we go back real quick, to this map, you will see that if all of the soldiers are up here in New Spain and there is a problem down here in Peru, it might take a really long time to get all the way down there, especially if you have to trek through all the jungle. But now they build roads that will be easier to go from one place to another. Now, it will still take a long time, but it won't take nearly as long as if you just have to trek through the jungle. So, move quickly from place to place. There was a social ranking in the Spanish Empire. Um, so, at the top, you have the most important people, the people with the most rights, and those would be the Spanish born people. The second to the top is the Creoles. They have Spanish background, but they're born in the colonies. The third are people with mixed backgrounds. Um, maybe the mother would be Native American and the father would be Spanish, and then they were not born in Spain. They were born right there in the colonies. And then the bottom of the ranking, people with the least amount of rights, would be the Native Americans and the African slaves. Um, we said the point of a colony is to make money. And the Spanish are going to do that by farming. Um, and to start these farms to grow and um, get bigger, uh, because you're going to want to grow cash crops, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, but you're going to you're wanna grow crops that you can sell to other people at a high price. And in order to get big farms, you have to have a lot of labor. And what they would do is the Spanish government would give Spanish colonists incomitas, which is a grant of forced Native American labor. So instead of the Spanish government giving them farm equipment, they would give them Native Americans to use as slaves on their farms. The colonists would use these incominas on their haciendas, and haciendas are farms. Sometimes these haciendas would grow very large, and they would be called plantations. 
and so large farms that these plantations are large farms that raise cash crop a cash crop is a crop that you can grow a lot of and sell a lot of um, and the most important cash crop was sugar so the Spanish are going to be making a lot of money off of sugar plantations in their colonies sugar was in high demand in Europe but there was not a lot of land to grow it so when they get over here to the Americas there's a lot more land and they can grow a lot more sugar the ideal conditions for growing were also present in the Americas by using slave labor to raise a crop that, that was in high demand, the Spanish colonies made Spain very wealthy. One of the most expensive parts of a business or an operation would be that you have to pay the people that are working for you. But if you're using Native American slave labor, you do not have to pay the slaves. So you get to keep all of that money. So that's why Spain gets very wealthy, because they're using slave labor. The Spanish also set up missions or settlements with churches. So settlements with churches. The goal of these missions was to convert Native Americans to Christianity. Um, they would make them dress like Spanish people. They would make them speak Spanish. They would take away all of their old ways and try to replace the Native American ways with the Christian ways or the Spanish ways. And not all Spaniards, people from Spain, approved of the poor treatment of Native Americans. One of those would be Bartolomeu de las Casas. He was a priest who received an incomitas, which is what? That is a grant of Native American labor, so Native American slaves. He says, how can a person serve God and also enslave people? Which is a good question. I mean, first of all, how can anybody enslave anybody? But back then, it was kind of the normal thing to do. So he has this, this big thought in his mind, like, how can, I, how can I, a person that's supposed to be following and serving God, how can I enslave people? So what he does is he gives up his incomitas, and then he fights for Native American rights. He becomes known as the Protector of the Indians. So if you see his name and you see Protector of the Indians, you will know that those two things go together. He is Protector of the Indians because for the next 50 years of his life, he fights for Native American rights, and he writes letters to the King of Spain. Because of him, Spain issues the new laws which set up gradual the gradual release of native americans now like we said before the reason spain became so wealthy is because they were able to use slave labor and if people are not making as much money because now they don't have slaves and they have to pay people to work for them people are going to get really angry and they're going to get really angry at the king so many people didn't like this and the king was forced to reverse the new laws but they lasted for quite a while Um, moving on to the Columbian Exchange. The Columbian Exchange is a, the movement of plants and animals, plants, animals, and diseases between the eastern and western hem hemispheres. This is a very important definition. So if you need to remember this somehow, you need to. So it's things, but I'll show you a map, so let's wait on this. Um, this is caused by people moving back and forth between the areas and all of the trade. This is the map of a representation of what the Columbian Exchange is. So these things over here on this arrow are things that start in the Americas and go to Europe. Before the Columbian Exchange, there were no pumpkins in Europe. There were no pineapples. There were no potatoes. Um, and then these are things over here that are starting in Europe and Africa and going to the Americas. So before the Columbian Exchange, there was no sugar in the Americas. There were no grapes. Um, there were no pigs, cows. So if you like to have a cheeseburger, you can thank the Columbian Exchange. So the Columbian Exchange has some positive effects. One is some of the stuff that we just talked about. From Europe to the Americas, you have 
you have cattle, pigs, and horses. Um, you have grapes, onions, and wheat. Those are things that would never exist in, Amer in the Americas if not for the Columbian Exchange. From the Americas to Europe, they get turkeys, corn, and potatoes. There are some negative effects of the Columbian Exchange. One of the main ones is disease. Native Americans had no immunity to European diseases. Approximately 20 million die in Mexico because of these diseases, and 90 to 95 percent die in Central America. That is a huge amount. If you have a hundred of your friends together, and you're just sitting around, and the next day you show up and 95 percent of them die, that means there are only five left. So that is a drastic decrease. Another negative effect of the Columbian Exchange is slavery. The colonists used Native Americans for slave labor, but they had to find an another source because of what we just talked about, these diseases, and that they would die too quickly from those diseases. They pick African slaves for four reasons. One, they're immune to European diseases. Two, they have no allies in the Americas, so they won't die as easily. They do not have any support in the Americas, so Native Americans have family and friends that are living in the Americas that could come and try to rescue them. The Africans do not. They're, it's a permanent source of cheap labor. There's The slave trade is thriving, and they have experience in sugar plantations in Europe already. The Middle Passage is how these Africans are transported from Africa to the Americas. Um, the Middle Passage is a harsh journey from Africa to the Americas. So you need to know that. Many enslaved Africans died during the trip. 15 to 20 percent on each ship died. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit why in just a second. Europeans came to associate slavery with black Africans this led to the growth of racism because for 400 years or so Europeans see Africans as slaves and as lesser people so that is where this racism grows from the slave trade lasted 400 years and is a major force that shapes American history I mean people there are there's still racism today um, as recently as the 1950s and 60s, African Americans had to fight for the right to use the same drinking fountain. I mean, that's not that long ago. So this is shaping American history, not just in the recent past, but also the present. This top picture right here is a picture of the Middle Passage. So sugar, tobacco, and cotton go to Europe. Um, they make things in Europe and they go down to Africa and then this is the Middle Passage right here Ooh, bad color this is the Middle Passage right here slaves from Africa to Americas this is a picture over here of what a boat might have looked like you can see that they have crammed people in they are like cargo this is not a luxury cruise. You are, um, you have maybe two feet right here. Um, you maybe have another two feet to lay long like this. So it's a very uncomfortable and very unsanitary, and that's why a lot of them died. This is another picture down here. You can count. I mean, you can't really count. There's so many, but there's all of these are people that they would try to stack in and try to get as many as they could from Africa to the Americas during the Middle Passage. A terrible, terrible journey, a terrible event. Um, but that is the ending note of Lecture 5 for Unit 1, and we will see you in Unit 2.